Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Greetings from Koh Samui. Coming to you from Lamai Beach today at this nice little restaurant called Siwa. Drinking a coffee with my friend Josh here. Cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. And uh, we're sitting down uh, for an interview today. They want to interview Josh on the channel for a while now. I think he has a really interesting story. Uh, so let's welcome Josh. Yeah. Hi, thanks very much for having me, Mike. I know we've been trying to connect for a little while. I'm really thrilled to uh, to finally be a part of your video. Of course, I've been watching your videos for the last couple of years, especially over COVID. Uh, and as Mike said, we're here on beautiful Lamai Beach. You can kind of get a, a bit of a view in the background. It's a little cloudy today, but it's nice. It's not so hot. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, I've got to tell you, the cappuccinos here at Siwa are excellent. They're, They're really, fantastic. really good. Yeah. Better than Italy. Good, good food, <laughs> too. <laughs> good food as well, sure. Definitely worth checking out when you come to Siwa. <laughs> right Absolutely. on the Mai Beach. Absolutely. And presently, I'm uh, teaching online, uh, which is a great experience. It's a great opportunity. It allows me to work in Thailand. Um, but I'm teaching in, in Canadian universities, and so that's great. And fortunately, Thailand has a variety of different visas uh, that are applicable. And there's a whole bunch of, of new visas that have just been released as well for potential uh, workers. Abroad, digital nomads. Uh, digital nomads workers. and that. Uh -huh. And uh, so it just worked out conveniently that this visa came up, and uh, I was available to take advantage of it, and it allows me to come to Thailand. Uh, and the beauty of it is I don't have to leave the country every time I renew the visa. Uh, so I have to renew it annually, year per year. That's the retirement visa. And that's the retirement. It's, it's, I feel a little sad saying that I'm on a retirement visa. I don't feel that old. Uh, but the retirement visa for Thailand clicks in uh, at 50 years old. And so I've just sort of crested the, mm. the mm -hmm. 50 year mark. And so it was You don't look young. You definitely look younger than well, 50. Well, I thank say. you. Thank you very much. You're I will welcome. give you 20 bucks for that later. <laughs> it's excellent, right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. uh, so, so that's kind of the, the situation. And, uh, uh -huh. and I'm really grateful to, uh, to have that opportunity to do that. Um, Fantastic. But I wasn't always teaching. This is sort of a newer thing for me. Um, I've always been in the hospitality industry. And uh, even coming to Thailand, I think my first time was 2007. And I just loved Thailand. It was an incredible experience. I had an opportunity to kind of travel around and, and explore Thailand. Awesome. And living here just was out of the realm. It was just something that I never felt could really transpire, mm -hmm. could really happen. I'm sure a lot of my viewers can relate to that, that sort of feeling. Yeah, um, and I'll tell you, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't it, it's not always necessarily an easy process to make it work. From my experiences, once I decided to try and I said, you know what, I, you know, I love Canada, I'm a proud Canadian, but I'm, I'm much prouder in the summertime in Canada. I really like the warm <laughs> weather. Uh -huh. And uh, so I made the decision, okay, I'm going to try and, and, and make Thailand work. Make the dream a reality. Make the dream a reality. And uh, so the first time I came, my first attempt, uh, I received a, uh, I got a job as a director of food and beverage at a really beautiful five-star resort here in Samui, actually. Um, and it was a great experience, uh, but the many Canadians maybe don't realize the, the working requirements here for Thailand. It, it's not like Canada, for example. Uh, it's, if you go to Thailand and you're sitting at a, at a restaurant and your server comes up, you have to understand that your server, uh, the people that work in the restaurant and work in the hotels and the resorts, are working a minimum of six days a week. 10, 12, sometimes 14 hours a day. Oh, that's um, tough. And very often they'll only get two days off a month, which is really standard. I yeah, mean, it does yeah. differentiate. No between, vacation time. Uh, there well, might be couple, some vacation time days, in there, but it's, it. it's, it's not that common. Mm -hmm. and, um, so mm -hmm. as a Farang, which is a foreigner, um, you're required to work those hours as well. And so on one hand, you're living in this beautiful paradise. But on the other hand, you're really working all the time. You don't really have a lot of time to, to enjoy it. Um, and so that job transpired, and I went back to Canada pretty broke, um, you know, uh, no, not a lot of resources, but undeterred, uh -huh. and I really wanted to try it again. Uh, I did some upgrading and came yeah. back and uh, uh, ended up getting a job as a general manager, a really beautiful boutique resort here in Samui as well. Uh, and I was the general manager there for two years. Things were going really well. I uh -huh. connected with a Canadian chef. And we also opened up a, a restaurant, a Fifties oh, Diner in Mainam. Nam. Which resort was that? Uh, that, that was uh, Dr. Frog's Dr. and Frog's. Uji's Boutique Resort. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, boutique resort. If you're looking for a place to stay in Samui, I highly recommend it. It's super clean, 
Um, and it's really, really beautiful resort. I should go there more often. Yeah, I always pass really it nice. on the way to Lamar, but I Frogs never stop in. It's a, is a statement. It's, it's been a, a uh -huh. restaurant for a long time. Uh, but of course, unfortunately, um, COVID, COVID happened and this decimated the entire Nobody could have predicted industry. that. Yeah, and so for a second time, I had to go back to Canada uh, pretty pretty broke, you know, <laughs> going, wow, it just didn't work out despite my best efforts. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I hear you. But I took that opportunity over COVID to upgrade. I took my higher education teaching certification, uh, and then I was fortunate enough to land a couple positions with a few different universities in Canada and start teaching online. And that's allowed me to come back and have a much more enjoyable lifestyle here in Samui. Excellent. Um, and, and teaching online. Yeah. Now that COVID is over, there's a real drive for uh, professors and for instructors mm. to come back to work on campus. And so in terms of long-term security, <laughs> uh, Maybe not so much. it's not really there, mm -hmm. but you kind of take it day by day. Sure. And for Cut now, anyway, lessons. it's it's at least going forward. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm actually heading back to Canada next week. Ah, that's right. That's why I wanted to interview you before to, you head Yeah, back. sure. I mean, uh, uh -huh. uh, and Canada is beautiful in the summer, obviously. And uh, it's a great opportunity to see the family and catch up with some friends. Sure, um, sure, sure. Um, But it's actually quite an expensive endeavor uh, to, to gain your pilot's license here in Thailand, either your, your private pilot's license or your UPL, your ultimate pilot's mm. license. Uh, more expensive, surprisingly enough, than and it is in, in Canada to do so. <laughs> so we'll go back to Canada. Get it done. Um, get it done. It done. And, uh, yeah, it's always been something I wanted to do. Fuck, so we'll, we'll have to go find some time. Oh, yeah. so if it everything works out okay. That would be awesome. Sure. And actually, I was playing around with Meta AI a little bit earlier right, before yes. this interview. And there's some really cool things you can do with it, uh, like generate AI images. And I made some, some pictures of like Thai and Philippine islands. Nice. And I said, just add a pontoon plane into the <laughs> image and it just slapped it right in there and you can animate it too. Oh man, so that's, that's the like it's flying. That's the but that's okay. not real. It's not real. It's it, AI. Um, I'd rather, it'd be better to have the real thing. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, Unfortunately, Thai aviation. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't allow in Thailand for any amphibious planes at all. So you can't fly and land on the beach. And I asked the pilot instructor, why is that? And he's quite disgruntled because he has an amphibious plane. He wants to be able to fly and land on the beach. Uh -huh. And he kind of alluded that um, there were just too many accidents. Oh, really? Too many people just crashing. Uh -huh. And so Thai Aviation said, that's it. No more, no more uh, <laughs> ultralights, no more, no more landing on the water. Did you and, see uh, the news story recently? Todd, uh, our mutual friend, was telling me about it. Uh, there's a plane taking off somewhere in the, on the lake in Vancouver. Oh, and, and it, hit, and the, it uh, hit a boat. Right. And it, it just ripped the the bottom. Yeah, bottom, that, that bottom actually, actually wasn't a lake. Uh, oh. That was the uh, the inlet in Vancouver where the oh. um, seaplanes take off and ah. they fly from Vancouver either to Seattle or to uh -huh. um, uh, Vancouver Island, Victoria. Yeah, and uh, it's an interesting video. You can you can find it easily on YouTube. Um, and by the way, the plane had the right of way. The plane had the right of way, but both both vehicles were demolished. Hopefully, yeah. no one was hurt. So I'm heading back to Canada on Sunday. I'll fly into Vancouver. Uh, the flight I got a really good deal on the flight. It's about 17 and a half hours, which is almost as fast as you can do it. That's yeah, really um, good. So it's really fortunate. A lot of the the flights uh, were quite expensive, and you know about. 25 to 30, 40 hours, you know, two days, three days, that kind of thing. So I but did get quite lucky about that. Short layover in Tokyo. Right? Short layover in Tokyo, about two and a half hours, oh, and so then bad. right on to uh, to Vancouver. And I'm looking forward to seeing my friends and, yeah, and yeah, family nice. in Canada. Um, but even, I, you know, I haven't gone back to Canada yet. And as we were talking before we started the camera, I'm already anxious mm. to return to beautiful Samui, <laughs> you know, it's uh... It has that effect on, on you, right? <laughs> now, I, I think I've been here just over two years, uh, four years in Thailand, I still have not returned to the States wow. since I left. Wow. Do you have any and desire to go back or see friends really, and family? Really, uh, I've kind of lost touch with a lot of my friends mm -hmm. in Austin and um, I think they don't really reach out to me. I don't really talk to them all that much anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm not really all that eager to see them. It's again. hard. It's hard when you're 
on the other side of the world yeah, as well, right? It is, you sort of it is. kind of start your own life here. Exactly. And, and hopefully, you know, next year my both my family, my dad and my mom are gonna come over and visit me. Right. Finally. For your wedding. In Thailand. For right. and, and I don't know if you know that. Yeah. I know you have a lot of uh, viewers. <laughs> Mike got engaged, which is fantastic. Uh, fiance is absolutely beautiful and wonderful. She's a uh, sweetheart. Mary, she really, really is. And you guys look so nice together. Thank you. And I Very really, lucky. really, really, really want uh, an invitation to your wedding. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I absolutely. want a party. Yeah. Thai For weddings sure. are the best in the world. I've been to <laughs> two now. Cheers. And uh, yeah, I just had such a fantastic time. Of course. And I've noticed in, in, and this may not be synonymous with all Thai weddings, but in right. two Thai weddings, one of them I was part of the wedding party. But in both cases I went. And uh, after the wedding, you know, people celebrate the party and the drinking. And I noticed that uh, many of the uh, elder ladies will congregate towards the table. And the night for the elder Thai ladies ends with, um, I'm not sure what game they're playing, but they gamble. They really? gamble and gamble Isn't that and put money in here. Uh, they do it anyway. Yeah, they do it anyway. And uh -huh. so that's how it all ends up. And I always feel kind of interested with that, that it, all, it always ends up with the, the uh -huh. uh, Thai mothers and grandmothers and aunts and that sitting at the table playing, I'm not sure if they play poker or they play a different kind of Thai game. Hmm. And they play for money and it gets pretty serious. And, uh, and do, so that's always kind they, of interesting. They put the watch. dowry in it? Because actually you got to pay <laughs> a dowry, right, the dowry as well when you're getting married. It's not sure. required, but it's um, custom. Traditional. Traditional, traditional. is a yeah. traditional thing to do. Um, you know, Canada really in the summer is beautiful. absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Huh? It is one of the most beautiful countries. Um, all the way across in the summer. Yeah, I'm more of a summer fan. I find the winters a little bit long for me. I was born in, in Saskatchewan, which is in the, the the center of Canada on the Canadian Shield. It's incredibly cold. Mm. Um, but uh, I'll be starting in in uh, on the west coast where I've lived for many many years, Victoria and Vancouver area. Absolutely gorgeous in the summer. And then I'll be making my way across Canada to Nova Scotia, where I grew up. And uh, I haven't seen my friends in Nova Scotia in decades. I mean, it's been so wow. long. Wow. And I have to tell you, Nova Scotia has harsh, harsh winters, in my opinion, respectfully. But the summers are an incredible trade-off to that. I mean, it's white sandy beaches. Wow. The water is incredibly cold. <laughs> it's really beautiful. Yeah. And uh, the National parks? Uh, oh, beautiful national parks. I, I've just been to Banff. Banff is Banff, also really incredible. Uh, drove up sure. there from all the way from Texas. Yes, you, Calgary. You, you went in the winter, if I recall. In the winter, which I'm is sorry the about that. Worst yeah. time to visit. <laughs> Negative forty degrees. Well, Banff has some great skiing, and so uh -huh. winter is traditionally a good tourist season for Banff in the winter. But, oh, okay. um, but it is cold. It's cold. all the lakes were frozen <laughs> it's really over. Cold. Here we are, you know, on a beach. Uh, Lamai Beach, one of my favorite beaches, by the way. It's fantastic. Um, I and love talking this about beach. the winter, you know, <laughs> so. I definitely Absolutely. don't miss the cold weather and scraping ice off the windshield because I grew up in Michigan. Right. Yes. And, um, sure. But I just I don't want to be in the snow. I call it white shit. White shit. <laughs> white shit. I have to say I would rather shovel rain than snow. Of yeah. course, uh, Thailand has its rainy season. Uh huh. And typically tourism is a little down mm. uh, during during rainy season, but I actually kind of like it. Uh, here the torrential me too, me too. the torrential downpours, and I mean it mm. rains like you, nothing you've ever experienced in the wet. But it only goes for an hour. Yeah, yeah it doesn't done. last very long. And you typically, it's not typically, always. yeah, it smells really nice after the rainfall, and uh -huh. everything's clean, and you know, it, it's kind of nice. Um, it's not that fun when you're riding a motorcycle. No, no, in definitely the rain, not. I mean, especially through the mud. And it it really, you can't express how soaked to the core you get in the torrential downpour. I mean, mm -hmm. everything gets wet, and you're just soaked. Um, still but it's kind still of fun, kind of a though. fun experience. It's it really fun. is. It's like a fun experience. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly true. You know, I've traveled around. I love Mexico. I, I love the Caribbean, South America area. Uh, you know, I mean, every place has its, its beauty. But one thing I, I really like about Thailand is on any given day, you can jump on your motorbike and you can just go and explore. Mm -hmm. Like I'm mm -hmm. never ever ever bored. You in never Thailand. get bored. It's I'm never bored. There isn't a moment that I'm ever bored. There's always something new. There's always something interesting. There's always yeah. something yeah. cool yeah. to to see or experience. Even if it's just driving on your motorbike and just driving uh -huh. around the island and checking out some back roads that you've never been on. It's always an adventure. And sure. To me, I love that part. From of an too. experiential perspective, mm -hmm. that's something that separates. Thailand, I think from from everywhere else in, in the world. Where do you see Thailand moving in the next sort of 10 years? 
Do you think that it's going to become overrun with foreigners now sort of coming here? Is it going to lose some of its culture and feel? Or do you think Thailand has the staying power to maintain, oh, question. maintain its culture and sort of retain uh, like the ideology to, that we have? I like to think so, but if you look even just like from photos of Samui 20, 30 right. years ago, yeah, not long in terms ago. of the, yeah. the overall, like the layout of the island and the, the development and all this stuff, you can see how much has changed just since 1987, that's the year I was born. Right. So 38 years, it's just like night and day. It is, yeah. In terms of development. But sure. Like culturally, I think it's withstood. It has sustained power over mm -hmm. that entire time. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that changing anytime right. soon. But maybe with like the advancements of AI and these sorts of things, sure. it could change even just like day-to-day -day interactions. Yeah, so very interesting. Very interesting. And, and you're absolutely right. I mean, the Thai culture, the Buddhism. I mm -hmm. mean, it really is the land yeah. of of smiles. It is it's really truly an incredible is. place. It's so friendly. Uh -huh. uh, we were talking before about the safety factor in Thailand and uh, the feeling of, of yes. safety. Yeah. The idea of safety. Just here walking in around Thailand at night. versus versus almost anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and just walking around at night. Have you ever? felt afraid when you're walking around at night if, if that happens Never. 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't really walk around all that often at night. I'll take the motorbike. Right, sure, but yeah. But still, yeah. even in a place like Bangkok, Bangkok is yeah. a big, huge, massive, sprawling uh, metropolis, and I still feel perfectly safe walking around at night. Uh, my experience has been the same, even uh -huh. late at night in Bangkok. Bangkok is often one of the top two most visited cities it in is. the entire world. If you haven't been to it Bangkok, is. I think a lot of people have a... Uh, preconception, a misconception about mm. what Bangkok is. I know my yeah. first time uh, going back to 2007 and we arrived at, at uh, Subhanapum, which is BKK, one of the most beautiful airports you've ever seen. Amazing. And we Amazing. hopped a taxi and we're driving into Bangkok and I'm kind of thinking in my mind it's going to be kind of this little village, maybe there's, there's some big buildings, <laughs> you know, whatever. And just the immensity, the size of this place, and the modernity of it. I mean, mm -hmm. the shopping malls, uh, we think we have big shopping malls in, it's in not, Canada. You wouldn't expect it to be a third world country. No, it's it doesn't even look like a third world country. Doesn't look like, doesn't feel like a third world country. It is so modern. Yeah, the banking cool. here is very, very advanced. You can do uh -huh. everything with your phone, transferring is, is quite easy. Um, exactly. The internet is absolutely incredible here. To give you a quick comparison, um, I pay for five gig with my phone mm -hmm. for six months, about eighty dollars Canadian. For six months. For six months, half a year. That's pretty damn good. In and it's great internet. It's fantastic. I would perhaps argue it might even be a little better than Canada in some cases. Would it be surprised? Here yeah. is is literally less than a sixth of the cost of what it is in Canada, for example, and you're getting an excellent product. I wonder why that is. Um, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Telecom commercial yeah, companies, yeah, monopolies. They have a monopoly, yeah. Sure. You know, uh -huh. um, yeah, it's definitely expensive uh, in Canada. So the cost uh -huh. of living here has definitely risen. There's no question. In Thailand. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But True. if you're comparing it to Western countries, it's still incredibly, incredibly oh, affordable course, in, comparative, in comparative terms. Of course, during the pandemic, it was even cheaper. Oh like, cheaper my gosh, yes. Because there's just nobody here yes. and supply and demand. And I'm so but grateful now, uh, for your videos uh -huh. over COVID. Um, I watched your videos in eager um, over COVID. <laughs> um, and it was so interesting to see your videos um, for, for Thailand that is so tourist centric that is so reliant in many ways on tourism mm -hmm. to be so empty and I thought it was so Ooh. interesting to have you walking around the towns and sort of exploring um, when when Thailand is so empty and, yeah, and I, the restaurants are closed and there's uh -huh, no one on the streets and the prices have come way way down it was a little depressing I will, will say that and right. slight, a little bit lonely sure. but uh, still worst places to be well and world. you know with during COVID it was kind of depressing everywhere yeah everywhere right? yeah not just here of course um, but uh, I'm glad uh -huh. you were in Thailand during that time and you were Me able too. to kind of stick it out very few regrets it's sort of interesting sitting with you we, we go out and, you know have brunch I'm more of a brunch guy because I work nighttime uh -huh, because of the time uh -huh. change you sleep in and late so, yeah, I sleep in late traditionally um, but we go out once twice you know three times a week sometimes yeah. we'll have some lunch or brunch always oh, fun and every time I've gone out with like someone will see him recording 
and you'll see them walking kind of in the background and they stop and look and they recognize them and then they'll kind of walk back the other direction and they'll look and, kind of just, <laughs> and then they'll sort of yeah, approach yeah. a little bit and go you know oh hi like i watched your your videos oh thanks very much and it makes it's total, working it Yay. makes total sense that uh, people are going to see your videos, yeah. particularly if they're coming to Thailand, of particularly course. if they're coming to Samui. Samui is a small island. It is. And so you kind of become a bit of a, a celebrity a bit. I kind of joke when people come over and I go, okay, you know, Michael give you an autograph. <laughs> five bucks, five bucks, right? <laughs> Only five I bucks. About that. That's all I ask. But uh, I do notice how your videos have had an impact on yeah, yeah. some of the destinations here in, in the mind. Mm -hmm. For example, um, uh, was it Rock Bar, for example? Cool bar. Cool. I'm so cool sorry. Bar. Cool bar. Uh -huh. Cool bar. This beautiful, out of the way bar, uh, uh, right on the beach. It's absolutely serene. It's so sure beautiful, is. and it's peaceful. Empty. Empty. There is no one there. It's got a nice bar and tables on the beach. And when we go there, we're the only ones there. And then Mike did a video of Cool Bar. And the next time we went back, I mean, the place is packed. It was I mean, packed. Everyone's I, don't, there. I don't know if it was a direct. It couldn't have been a direct. Result I think it was a direct or. result of the video. For example, is the uh, outdoor gym. There's a beautiful mm. outdoor gym. Uh, actually, not far here from Lamai, uh, you can see it just down the beach. Mm -hmm. And this gym was my favorite gym. Oh yeah, beautiful. It's great. It, it was it was empty. Uh, you can go there any time, uh, any time of day. It's, it's pretty much empty. It only takes donations. You're working outside. It's absolutely beautiful. beautiful. And so Mike did a, a video of that. And now the gym is relatively busy. You know, people just yeah. watch that video and yeah. now they're going to this gym. Understandably, right? I don't know if I could take credit for it. I but, think you can uh, take that credit video. For that. Also got a bit, about right. a million views. And they've renovated it too, right. so they put yeah. in new exercise equipment, so you can work out like facing this way. Oh wow! Towards Absolutely the Absolutely amazing. Absolutely it's looking amazing. Looking even better now. Really beautiful. Uh, Samui has some beautiful facilities. It really does. Yeah, uh, that's for Samui, sure. Samui is, is unique, it, it, you know, it's this small island life, but it's got the airport, it's mm -hmm. got a beautiful eclectic little shopping mall called Central, it's got the movie theater, it's got the, the hospitals, and it's got the nightlife in sort of the downtown area, Chiwang, Bopuit, that area. Yep. We're in Lamai, it's about 20 minutes south on the island, and from Chiwang or Bopuit to Lamai, you sort of step into this... Uh, more mom and pop. It's not commercialized. Mm -hmm. I mean, It'll there's Seven Elevens everywhere. Sure. There's one McDonald's restaurant, and I think that's about it. Everything else is mom and pop stores. No Starbucks here. No there's Starbucks. There's only two on island. Yeah, right. So you can really have the best of both worlds with Samui. Mm -hmm. You know, the other islands are absolutely beautiful. It's Koh Phan Yang, which is gorgeous. It's a very hippie culture. It's got the full moon party. Um, but it, it, it really doesn't have the infrastructure. That's right. So if you're looking at, at the No totality, airport, the roads are right. so great. If you, if you want to fly, better, though. you have to come to Samui and then go to Koh Phi That's right. Whereas Samui really has it all. Yeah. But we were talking about the development and possible overdevelopment uh, that's happening in Samui now. Everywhere you go in Samui, there's building, there's condos, uh, yeah. there's, there's new hotels. Hard to get away from. Up. It really is. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be interesting to see what transpires over the next decade. It could become like another Bali. It's possible. I hope yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah. But I, I there's so many cement trucks like driving by oh, our house all the time. All the like time. 14 sure. pool villas being built sure, across sure. our house and then plenty of other construction sites. Yeah. The one new yeah. ones popping up all the time. <laughs> You're right. The, the one thing that is kind of nice, uh, particularly with foreign investment, corporate foreign investment, like these large resorts, large hotels, is they are beginning to engage in corporate social responsibility. That's good. Are towards That's sustainability. Good. Uh -huh. And so it's my hope that that will translate into uh, more sustainable practices for the businesses here, both corporate and local. Uh, for example, if you look out on Lamai Beach right now, it is a super clean beach. I mean, there, I sure don't see is. any kind of garbage. No. I don't see anything anywhere. The water is absolutely beautiful and pristine. And so hopefully uh, our beautiful Samui will, will sort of retain Fingers that crossed. And, and stay that way. And, uh, before COVID, ah. our main demographic was 51% China. Ah. Now China has really dropped in terms of travel. And we've seen an uptick, um, uh, particularly from, say, uh, Russian tourism Russian, yes. and, uh, and and tourism from, from India. Um, and there's no, no negativity associated no, no, with this no. at all. It's, it's just Ukraine. an observation. Of course, Israel. Ukraine, uh, the, the Middle East war has really had an effect on things. 
Um, uh, a lot of tourism now coming from India. Part of that is uh, the uh, opening of some of the visas uh -huh. that the Thai government uh -huh. has now introduced, which has made it easier oh, um, for a variety of different uh, countries now to, to visit. Sure. Um, but it's been interesting sort of the change in demographics that we've noticed over the past uh, past four years, uh, pre-COVID and, and post-COVID, which is kind of interesting. I don't think Thailand is 99% Buddhist. It was at one time, oh, but it's starting to... Yeah. It's still predominantly, for sure, predominantly Buddhist. Not 99%. Really nice. But it's beautiful um, that, uh, that, that uh -huh. Thailand is, is so open, um, and it is considered one of the most uh, open cultures, uh, open countries in the entire world. Which is oh, really nice. And, and oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, that draws draws me to Thailand. It draws a lot of people to Thailand, and it's been an interesting observation. Um, where, for example, you have the the really challenging, difficult um, war that's going on, for example, in Ukraine and Russia, and then you come to it's Thailand, uh, of course, in the Middle East. Uh, then you come to Thailand, and it's not unheard of to say see. Uh, a Ukrainian sitting at yeah. one end of the table and then a Russian sitting at the other end of the table. And so these are two countries that are in conflict. But here in Thailand, at least for the time being, um, they've been able to sort of maintain that, that overall yeah. peace. And they it must coexist, be a very peaceful coexistence. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't imagine how difficult that must be uh, for people on, on both sides of the conflict. Um, to, to be able to retain that. And um, I want to thank you for, for coming on <laughs> My channel. complete pleasure. I'm and so glad, you know, and, and this was a nice trade. I know I convinced you to come in and speak to uh, my hospitality class about marketing, about what you were doing, and you were just a hit. They just loved you. Awesome. Uh, so the students That's from what I Hong like to Kong. hear. We had over 62 students in the class. Mm -hmm. They're really interesting to hear your story. And uh, so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come here You're and very uh, talk to you about Thanks my experience in Thailand. And of course, it's always great to hang out and uh, just, just chat and uh, you know, hang out on, on beautiful Lai Mai Beach here in beautiful Thailand. And so if you have any questions, uh, Mike is definitely the guy to reach out to about Thailand, about Sinhali, uh, about Lamai. And I know I'm going to continue watching your videos and be back in about months. three months. Three yeah. months is not my, too long. Finish off my pilot license and then, uh, and then come back to, uh, to beautiful Thailand. So, awesome. Well, cheers, Mike. Okay. Cheers. Great talking to you. Yes, and uh, Cheers to you as well. To viewers. the world, we'll see everybody in beautiful Koh Sinhali. Take care. Cheers. Stay safe. Peace from Thailand.